Pig Pig. New textures. Ninja, ninja. Here we go. I'm going to just come over and just change the base color, body armor, uh, find it, ninja. And I just put this here. There. Yeah, he's nice. He's black. Now his outfit is, uh, now he's, outfit is sl slowly turning black. We hit this here. Come on, man. Unique, make unique, make unique. There we go. Uh, let me see what else I got to do. I'm gonna go in and click onto his pants here. Oh, this is different. <laughs> I think it's teeth, teeth need to be teeth adjusted. Teeth. Let's go over to his teeth and let's do some teeth. adjustment teeth. on his teeth. teeth. I don't know I if I fixed his teeth or not. Did I fix his teeth? I gave him this. I gave him the teeth, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All right, testing, testing. Hello, guys. I was just uh, getting off the uh, one gun live stream. Uh, looks like he's continuing to do his work on that show enough thing and uh, making some killer progress. But I am ready to continue screwing around in my own work. So <laughs> let's see here. Um, I think I'm going to try to figure out how to enable and disable and control a lot of uh, the blueprint stuff from within a sequence today. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to try to target the um, 
the night mode in this city from a sequence. Uh, where the frick is it? Is it even in here? Somewhere in here, there is a blueprint that controls the the time of day for the uh, for the level, unless I deleted it. So we're gonna try to figure that out. First, let's find it. Make sure it's in here. I guess I could just run this thing and just confirm it with a joystick before I waste my time looking for it. Uh, where the hell is my joystick? Do -do -do -do. Well, I think I can do this with the mouse, but I really do need my joystick. Let's see here. So yeah. So that blueprint is in here that allows going from day to night. All right, so it's definitely in here. Let's see there. Na 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 na. All right. Let's uh, find it. City, it's a lot of shit in the city. It's a lot of unloaded stuff. Scene assets, lighting, night mode. How come it didn't show up when I typed the word night? That's crazy. You have to be exact when you're searching for shit. Oh, now it's there. Oh, I guess it just wants to work when it wants to, huh? So there's the blueprint, all right? So the thing that I've noticed with this blueprint is that regardless of what you do, uh, there's other stuff that's taking over. So what I'm gonna do is like, e even when I go in here and uh, enable it, like is night, nothing happens. I mean, there's obviously other things going on in the background. Eventually I gotta get rid of all that other stuff that's affecting this, but you know, th this is the learning process, you know? So, uh, I got to figure out how to trigger that um, and how I'm going to try that obviously is from the cinematic since we're making movies. Uh, let's see here. Sequences. Sequences. Alphabetical order. I went to public school. Houston ISD. So I don't know how to spell, read, write, or do math. So, okay. That's from the wrong spot. Cinematics maybe? I gotta keep everything in one spot, man. This is now, this particular cinematic is kind of screwed up. I don't know what's going on with it. Like when I play it, like if I enable the the actual view here, it looks fine. It plays fine. It's placed the way it's supposed to on the rail. That looks gorgeous. But when I actually run this cinematic, like actually run it, it doesn't work. So here it is. I'm going to trigger it. Oh, now we can obviously see that the camera is doing movement. It's doing its its movements that it was programmed to do, but it's not attached to the rail. So that's another thing I gotta figure out is how it becomes detached. Uh, I have no idea. Is it because of this? You know what? It'd be something stupid like that. Like the attachment trigger was way before it started. Huh, it can't be that, that dumb. No, that would have been too easy. 
But that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to figure that out. I'm here to trigger the night mode. And I think you know, I, after we finish, if we figure out how to trigger it, uh, we'll come back and play around with try to resolve why this camera is not attached to that camera rail during the actual uh, runtime. So let's see, let's see how. All right, now, this is one of the things that kind of drew me crazy yesterday. I was trying to make the camera move and stuff, and then I realized it's because this thing is locked. So if you disable this, excuse me, you disable that view, now you can move around. <laughs> but you're basically like locking it to whatever camera results you want to see. We need a track. Oh wait, do we need a trigger track? I think we do, but I think we need to bring that that night thing in here so we can trigger it. I think this is how it's supposed to be done. I I, I, I got to read some stuff, man. See, this is, it didn't even need to work. There's a blueprint. It looks like it wants to go there. But it doesn't it doesn't go in all right so let's see if this will work add event track trigger so there's my event can we drop it in there now not yet okay oh shit what the now it works how does that even make sense How does that even make sense? It didn't want to work before, but now that we have an event track, it works. So let's see what tracks are available here. Trigger. Oh, it can have its own trick. What the? What the hell? And now I get rid of the original one that allowed me to bring that in. That is a weird ass thing. So, what's the event? I think we gotta double click on that. And that'll bring this in here. Is it as simple as running a function? Holy shit, it's night. That should be it, right? I mean, I, I don't know if I'm missing anything. Self, and the self is this. That should be all I need from a logical sense. Target must have a connection. Am I connected to that? How does that even make sense? Come on, man. Did it work? Oh wait, no. It, the sequencer has to run. No, it still didn't work. Okay, let's uh, let's let's put it at a events. Let's let's drag that event a little bit more over here, so it runs at frame thirty one second into it because maybe it's just too early under the thing and it skips it i don't know man i don't know how this shit works so night mode trigger is night target that looks fine to me so when i trigger that cinematic and it reaches frame 30 it should turn into night but it doesn't. So how do we get this shit to work? What am I doing wrong? I mean, it seems like I've done every logical thing. 
on my own. Salt the Oracle, the great and powerful Google. To set night mode and sequencer, you first need to track blueprint night mode and sequencer. Then you need to track events trigger. Then you need to add a new key to the timeline. Right click on the key and set event to night time. Right click on the key. Wait, I didn't need to do this blueprint bullshit? Hang on. Hang on. So we right click this. That's the frame. The event is. Call function, night mode event. So it adds that. To it okay so we are doing that call in editor when click this event will be triggered in editor outside of the the pie whatever that means something about a window play in editor okay Set key to a specific time. Rekey, snap to frame to make key. I don't know. So I'm getting, I, I, I don't want to have to keep starting with that game mode. I wanted to immediately jump into that sequence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip that step. I'm going to go to open level blueprint. I'm going to add the on enter key thing, begin event, begin play. So I'm just going to have it immediately jump to that cinematic. I, 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 so I don't have to keep doing that pressing of the number one in order to launch it. It should be a little faster for testing purposes. Hmm. All right, so I jumped immediately into the sequence. Okay. So it obviously did not work. Um, but maybe we got to redo that thing. Redo that thing. So it has the pass to blueprint night mode pass to. What does that do? Tries to access object as a blueprint pass. It may be an instance of. This will cause the blueprint to always be loaded, which can be expensive. I'll pay for it. No. I'll pay for the damages. What is this? Inputs night mode. Pass by reference. I don't know what that means. Not replicated. How did I find that function? Blueprint night mode event. There it is. That's that looks different. That looks a little bit different. Not target, night, whoa, that doesn't work. What is this? Target, EXT, Europa Director, BP. Let's see what happens. It's all like trial and error bullshit. What, what was that? Whatever that was. Infinite loop detected. 
How is that an infinite loop? It starts and then it targets night mode and then it starts. What? I don't know. Is that right? Let's try this. But at least my whole program didn't crash. That crashed too. Shit. Why did that crash? Why is that an infinite loop? That's causing an infinite loop. And now it's just flat out error. Yep, that did not work. So how do we, whoa, did it work? I mean, it looked a little yellow, but I don't think it was nighttime. No, that's not nighttime. The lights are on, but that I think the lights are always on. Yeah, that's definitely daytime. So how do we get this nighttime mode to enable itself? Events. Night mode event. This is, I mean, I guess I could just change, it just changes the, the place where that, that keyframe happens. Rebind to night mode event. What are my options here? If I leave that out and have this do it. So weird, man. So many little things to well, that that broke the system again. So this is definitely not what we want to do. What are my options? Casting. I have no idea what that does. Hey, nerdy, what's up, man? Yeah, I'm back at it, trying to figure out how to turn uh, that night mode on. But I keep running into an infinite loop situation and it it, it crashes the the runtime. So let's uh let's start over with this. Oh, this is the director blueprint. Let's get rid of that. The director blueprint is empty. We take the night mode and before it wouldn't let me add it, but now it does. What kind of crazy shit is that? So now that night mode is being tracked, it's in here. And we add a track. This thing binding. I mean, it should already be bound because it's a track of that object, right? I don't think we need to do anything. Active attach. Why do we, that's so weird. Gameplay cues. Binding. Well, let's continue. So we, what the hell did we just do? Where did it go? Did it do anything? 
it didn't do nothing special. So we need, this needs a track. And the track is an event. It's a trigger. And this trigger will happen here. We right click. Event unbound. Okay, that makes sense. Because unbound means everywhere. It's not just in that one little block area. Properties. This looks completely different now. So I need to attach it to night mode. See this sequence. Director. I'm not going to do that. So unbound. And what's the event? Can I just, can I leave it unbound? That's just for changing the keyframe of where it happens. So when we do that, BP night mode, call in editor. This that's not going to work. So it's playing the cinematic and the game at the same time. That's just crazy. All right. That it automatically plug that in for me. Target self compiles perfectly fine, but I just had done that not too long ago. That's the same thing I did earlier. There's no reason why it would work now. It crashed. Try running it like that. I mean, I don't think it would do anything. Not night time. What the hell? Damn, they even animated that guy's feet pressing on the pedals. Blueprint nighttime evo mode event. Multicast run on server. I don't see how this works. So here's a forum post. Let's see what it says. In the city sample, there is a way to switch it on to night mode manually so I can use it for cinematic. <clears throat> so can I use it for cinematics and sequencer? I know you can switch it in gameplay mode, but I just want to switch it in non-gameplay mode. And as somebody else, I'm having the same problem. I added a call to to, I added a call to call on trigger nighttime to the menu in 
BP City Sample Options World. This is probably far from the best way to do it, but it works. Thanks, but that still requires you to go into game mode. Shut up. You're supposed to. Why wouldn't you want to do it? That's where all the simulations happen. Silly, silly, silly. Event on initialized. Call on trigger nighttime. Get city sample game state. Uh, initialize sun. Damn, that's a lot of crap. Uh, initialize mass spawner targets of. What is this? Event graph. Oh, he modified. He modified it from back there. I still don't think I can work with that. Let's see what else is on here. I think, I mean, ultimately I could probably go in and hack this. That might work. That looks logical. To set night mode in sequence, you first need to track night mode in sequences. Then you need track events trigger. Then you need to add a new key to the timeline. Right click on the key. Set the event to set night time. You can use the search box. Set night time. I was doing it. I was close. Let's see. Or it's not in here. It's not. Oh, wait. Let's remove this case sensitive thing. Okay. Didn't I have this earlier? I could have sworn I had that before. Let's see what else. Uh, quick bind. Oh, the quick bind needs to be done that way. Wait a minute. Where do I get back there? Event call in. Let's get rid of this and let's try it again. So we do this, then we right click. Set night time and it gives me that, which is where I was. All I needed to do was connect it like that. Okay. Let's rename this back to it. Just that. Uh, okay, let's see if that works. I'm pretty sure I already had that at some point. What the fuck? All right, stream is over, y'all. Go home. I figured it out. Let's go. We're done. All right, so I need to make some notes because I know this is something I'm going to forget. In fact, I might do a little quick tutorial just so I can have that video in there because I know I'm going to forget how to do this. So that's something I need to document. Because there's obviously not a video on this out there yet, so it might as well be me who makes it. Um, wow. That, I have no idea what I just did, to be honest. Let me take a screenshot. That. I'm going to save it there. Write down my steps. Well, uh, just copy and paste this guy. So whoever you are, Aaron Morse, thank you for that. Uh, you just saved me a lot of time. 
Once you have added the event, you will need to go back to the key and right click on it to get properties and then check the call in editor. This will allow the trigger to work in the editor. Oh yeah, it works in the editor too. Nice. That's noise. Okay. Save those notes and save this guy's username so I can give him thanks when I make this video to myself later. This work that it stopped working trying to reproduce the area it happens I mean this is sometimes this shit just kind of seems to work at random Gives you a working to toggle the details pane. What is this? Set night time. Oh, that's kind of handy. Does that work? see it. What did he do to get there? Advanced commission? I mean, I have this, but that doesn't work. I also found the call in editor in the blueprint, which gives you toggle. Uh, so that's what that does in here. the wrong spot. It's editor only actor. Uh, which one do I need? Because it would be nice just to have that. I wouldn't have to do the trigger thing. Uh, let's see here. Set time. Call in editor. So when you enable this, I should now have a button set daytime. Okay. <laughs> well, it definitely changed the background. Oh, okay, so I'll do that too. Kyle. Let's see, that is some cool little finds, man. So with that enabled, we have two buttons here, set nighttime, set daytime, which kind of still looks like nighttime in the middle of the day. Well, there's some other crazy shit going on in there. It's obviously stuff that's missing from here. Maybe I either gotta disable this night thing. Uh, 
I don't know where I did it. This night. No, it was already disabled. All right. Well, I am not going to worry about that because I know how to get it to turn into nighttime now. So I just got to click. Just got to run through that little trigger and it does it. Click. <laughs> So, all right, so we'll put that at frame zero. We'll run the sequence. Oh, that's the wrong one. We'll just play it. It should already start at nighttime. It's a nice place to start. Yeah, that's a nice shot, unintended. Cause that camera is supposed to be on a rail. All right, let's see if we can figure out how to put that camera back on its, uh, back on its rail here. Cause, I mean, I mean, I guess if I can't figure out how to reattach it, I could just redo it. It wasn't that big of a deal. It's not the final shot, anyways. So, it's all for fun and games. <laughs> Where do you work? What part of the world uh, are you in? I mean, you're obviously not in the U.S., so you're, most people are off work today. It's a U.S. holiday. That's all right. I, I, I watch and stream YouTube videos while I'm driving too. It's a bad habit. Damn, that looks so beautiful, man. If I could get that shit to look like that. This is this is going to be really good, man. I'm, I'm really excited. Like Once I iron out all these little kinks and stuff, I think everything's just going to come together so fast. I'm able to switch from nighttime to daytime. I'm able to rig uh, a lot of these rail stuff. I don't know why this one is not working. That look at that action. Wow. That is beautiful, man. That is so nice. Look at those reflections on the ground. Cleveland. Oh wow. Oh, okay, so you're getting off early. It's nice. I'm actually, you know what? I spent so much time on my own over here. I'm going nuts. I'm, I, I'm literally considering getting like a little side hustle, a little side job, because I've always wanted to learn how to do like that that short. Uh, what's what do they call it? Short order cooking. So I'm seriously considering just getting a job at some some Denny's or some Waffle House somewhere. I want to learn how to do that, man. I don't have time to go to like, uh, you know, like a like a college thing. But if if it's some place where I can just go and work like one day or two days out of the week, like a little part time thing, just so I can learn how to do that shit. I've been known to do some crazy shit though, man. I I went to bartending school and I never really worked as a bartender. <laughs> I just wanted to learn how to make drinks. I um. Uh... I've been wanting to learn how to fly an airplane, like, but it's like they want you to go through all this, this bullshit courses and stuff, and I don't have time for that, dude. But I've heard that you can learn from some of these farmers who do like uh, crop dusting. I'm like, I'm trying to find somebody who 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 does that, and tag along maybe, or try to figure that out. I would love to just you know someday learn to fly an airplane and. And just be able to do some random shit like that and be able to just go, hey, 
I'm going to go get me some Emos pizza in St. Louis, Missouri this weekend. Just rent a little Cessna or whatever. I ain't got nothing to do. I got more than more than enough time on my hands, man. But but sometimes it's nice to just interact with people. So I, I'm really, really liking that idea of just like embedding myself in some waffle house somewhere and just work there for a few months and just kind of, you know, just kind of enjoy myself a little bit. That would be fun. I don't know about grocery store. I did a grocery store when I was a young, uh, a young, uh, a young guy back in the day. Uh, worked at Kroger, stocking boxes overnight and stuff like that. I did not enjoy that, but it was, it was, it was. Yeah, I mean, I guess it was nice to have that extra income, extra money when I was a teenager. Uh, I, I just did not enjoy the work. I used to sneak into the freezer and eat the yogurt. <laughs> they would find the open boxes back in the dairy section in the freezer I just remembered I can't believe I did that shit <laughs> I, 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 I probably owe Kroger like I don't know like 200 bucks in yogurt <laughs> Uh, I just admitted a crime on a live stream. Uh, hey, I think we got statutes of limitations. Not only did it, would the yogurt have been expired by now, but this Kroger's even still around. Nice, 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 nice. Damn. You know, I could just kind of redo my steps here for, for practice purposes and call it a tutorial. And just after I'm done with the stream, clip the... Uh, the section of the stream and publish that as a tutorial that might make things easy nah i don't want to do that I'll, I'll do i'll do that some other time all right Oh man, what was I doing? I started thinking about yogurt and uh, I got completely thrown off. Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I achieved my mission for today. I mean, this was it. I wanted to figure out how to turn, how to control this night uh, blueprint, night, night mode blueprint. So at the same time, I guess I can go in here like to frame 100 or so, 100-ish. And add another event. That event is just like a an event keyframe, basically. Right click, and the event itself will be. I wonder what other options I may have. This sequence, I don't know. Night mode event, but we'll go set. Night time. So we'll set daytime. So there is that section there. So what it's doing, this is creating, okay, I'm understanding it now. This is creating blueprints uh, based on names. And these are the names, and they're all in the same thing. So it's not going to fire all of these at the same time. What triggers it is this is triggering something from here and it's calling it by name. So this is BP nighttime event. That's that one. Oh no, that's, I don't know what the fuck that is. Wait, hang on. It's triggering it by name. Oh, there it is. The nighttime event zero. 
So it's, it's it, this is like a bucket. It's containing all these little independent blueprints, but they all don't run at the same time. So when this triggers, it looks inside of this little bucket, finds the, the named event, and runs whatever function it has associated with it. That's how that works. So to make things even more clearly, I can just call this uh, set day, oops, set day, and this one I can change it to set night, and that would make more sense. So it's like a little switch. So each, uh, so this is the event. It's like set to set night and set day. And this is going to set the nighttime and set the daytime to the, the target. So this is the target action to the blueprint night mode. So there's uh, set daytime, which is the target action to the blueprint night mode. So it's not just, so whenever it gets to these uh, triggers, it's not just running this whole thing. This is like a, yeah, this is like a bucket. It just contains all the independent little functions. That's how that works. <laughs> well, you know, you can always uh, mark the tutorial. I think, uh, hang on a second. Oh, no, I have to be streaming it from the behind this, the, the YouTube thing, because there's like a little bookmark thing that I can start setting bookmarks in and just let people jump back and forth to the different sections that contain the things. But yeah, this is, this is such a useful little thing, man. So now we have events. I have set night. It's going to start at nighttime. And then at frame 100-ish, it's going to turn back to day. Let's look at this. It should work. I mean, logically, I don't see why it shouldn't work. So it's night. And we're inside of that character. Let me see if I can move her out of the way. Oh, shit. Come on, move out of the way, lady. <laughs> uh, she's standing right in front of where the dolly is. Um, where is my joystick? I need to move that character out of the way. Oh, I guess. Hang on. There we go. I'll place her over here by, by this building. That way she's behind this building. So now we'll go back to the sequence. So she shouldn't be in front of the camera anymore. Let's see if this turns into daytime. It should. There's no reason why it shouldn't. If it doesn't, then, you know, I don't know what the fuck. Why is this lady standing in there? It did not turn to daytime. And that lady standing in the way is not helping. So let's see here. What did I do wrong? I didn't do anything wrong. I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to do. So this daytime property set day call in editor blueprint night mode. So event is set day call in editor blueprint night mode. We're gonna let it happen at frame. Frame 200, let's give it a little space. So when I go here, it's night and there is day. So the background is changing, but the textures and everything else, this is obviously some kind of a bug because it's obviously triggering the daytime. That is so weird. So that's a, that, that's a bug. I got nothing to do with that because see when it runs over that trigger it changed the that thing so it ran over that trigger and it's nighttime but if I run over this trigger it'll turn it into daytime supposedly but er but everything like the textures and all that stuff stays as nighttime so now it's daytime everything is white that's no bueno, man. What the fuck is going on there? What is going on there? 
it obviously it's, it's obviously triggering the, the correct uh, thing obviously triggering the right thing but I, I've noticed we, I mean we noticed this issue earlier when I was trying to do it directly and it would stay as nighttime. There's got to be like a second blueprint or something affecting this so that it doesn't change back to daytime the way it's supposed to. But it is working. This is a, hmm, it's kind of a, see, let's start at daytime. If I can get out of this sequence. Hang on, hang on, hang on. It's got to be something with the settings that I did outside of this blueprint earlier. I need to stop screwing around with those settings. Uh, see, this, this is probably what screwed me up. I'm going to... I can clean that up now. This this is something that's being done. Maybe this is setting it inside of that little INI file on the folder. I might, I might have to delete that file. But let me go in here and remove all those, those things that I did. Wow. Maybe this would be working if I wouldn't have done all those modifications earlier. All those all little toggles and shit. We'll remove this, set daytime, set nighttime. Let's see here. I've obviously been messing with all sorts of stuff earlier. Set daytime, set nighttime, find event. So there's the actual function right there. And that looks like a function to me. Then get audio data for the script. If I unplug this, this will probably kill the uh, the sounds that are messing me up. It won't start them. Let's kill it. Let's kill the sounds. Let's kill them from here. Because basically, I have a feeling that when the when the thing the city starts, it automatically sets itself to daytime, and it starts the uh, the audio sequences, and that's why it's overlapping on the it's overlapping into my other scenes. But if I can call these independently from the sequencer, only when I'm outside. Then that would trigger the sounds that are for the city outside of the cinematics, outside of the like the nightclub and stuff. Let me restart the uh, engine. And let's see if it resets itself. Hopefully it does, because otherwise it's gonna be screwed up. <laughs> I'm gonna have to like rebuild the city sample and bring back the default uh, blueprint before I started modifying the hell out of it. But, hey, we figured it out. We figured out that other part. That's what matters.
So we're directly inside of the Europa sequence here. Let's uh, change that real quick so that next time it starts, it goes immediately into the other map project settings. So we're going to start with the Shady Springs map. Where is it? That one. Uh, this is how you uh, you set which map or which level you want uh, to start when you start the engine. Save all. We'll turn it off again, and we'll relaunch it. So when it comes in, it should by default start at my Shady Springs map, which contains that, that sequence. Where's the DJ at? <laughs> I need to put a DJ in that map. Huh? Ain't nobody gonna see that guy. There's no DJ, but I can show you where the BJ is. Have you seen that? It's a little Easter egg. I get a kick out of it, I guess. Uh, let me see here. Let's go into... This is just something stupid I'm adding for the people at home that, that, that like to nitpick every animation frame by frame. Maybe they'll find this, maybe they won't, but it'll, it's in there. So if we go in here. <laughs> now this sequence, I mean, if you're, if you're watching it, you may or may not see it. It depends, you know, it's going to be on a big screen at some point, but it's, it's going to be way in the background and it's going to be in a little corner. It's going to show up for like maybe half a second. You know, um, watch. Come on, load up. Oh, okay. That's not what I wanted. I have this, I had it set to run when it first starts. Let me disable that. Let's disable that. All right. Oh, and now it's going to start here because this is the last thing I was looking at. Damn it. I can't get a break today. Stop it. We'll go inside of the nightclub. All right. So in this particular sequence, The main actors are are going to be over here. So there's the rail system, there's the dancers. We walk towards the actors and they start performing their thing over here. And in the background you see all these guys here. But if you're looking very closely, there's this couple over here in this this chair. And I'll zoom in on that. This is just something for the for the fans. <laughs> right here. <laughs> and I may or may not fix that animation, but from far away it, it looks like something that's not so family friendly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm 13 years old, man. Fuck this. 
Uh, there's a little Easter eggs for everybody who likes to nitpick animations frame by frame. Maybe they'll find it, maybe they won't. I don't know, but it'll be there in the background. <laughs> <clears throat> One way or another, I'm getting canceled. <laughs> uh, the other scene where they're outside of the warehouse, I got a scene with two dogs. Uh, you know how dogs, they, they get stuck, like their, their, their butts get stuck together. I don't know what the hell happens, but it's funny as hell to watch them. Just struggling to get themselves detached. Um, you got a scene with like just two dogs doing that in the background. Just kind of like, no no purpose. It adds nothing to the story whatsoever. I just like trolling people. Give people the reason to watch the film more than once. <laughs> First time, watch it for the story. Second time, watch it for the Easter eggs. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's figure out what the hell's going on with this rail system. Because it would be nice to be able to do this in a way that, that we can reproduce it. Um, see, the thing is, this thing is already parented to the rail. So regardless of whether I parent it inside of the sequence itself, it should stay parented. It just doesn't make sense for it to become detached. So let's see here. Sequences. Ah. I, I need to get my shit straight. Um, some are inside of cinematics and some are inside a sequence folder. So that thing bounces itself up. So it should work. It works in editor. But somehow. You know, that thing started happening when I added that fade track. Let me, let's remove that fade track. Oh, by the way, it's daytime again. So we were able to restore that. And when I run over this keyframe, it should turn everything into night. And when I run over that keyframe, it should turn us back into daytime. If it doesn't, it's because this is a bug, okay? Boom. So that's fine. And that did not work. So it runs over it. It only, it only turns the, the, the daytime. So that's going to be a problem. Which means I either have to do my whole thing in the daytime, do my whole thing in the nighttime, or do some heavy researching to figure out how to turn everything to back to daytime. Would it be possible? No, that wouldn't work. Theoretically, if I create a keyframe with its current state as is, and then at the end, I just copy that keyframe. Theoretically, that should put everything back to normal. That's something I'm gonna have to experiment with maybe tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a classy joint. That's not getting shut down anytime soon. Uh. <laughs> oh man. But how do you grab a keyframe of the entire thing? Because these are not real keyframes. These are event states or whatever they call event triggers. All right, I'm not going to worry about that. I achieved my mission, which was to figure out how to control the nighttime. So now let's figure out what the hell's going on with this camera component. There's a binding. There's the attachment. Let's remove that. And it still works.
but it's not attached to the rail. So let's uh let's delete this track. Completely got rid of that the track. So it's not even tracking the camera, it's only tracking the rail. But since the camera is attached to the rail, it's gonna keep it. Camera cuts. It doesn't show it. Let's see what happens. Oh well, this are invisible in in runtime, so I I wouldn't be able to see anything happen. Yeah, it's invisible. So let's see. Camera rail is there. Now we're gonna take the Stereo Europa Cam, give it a track. Wait, maybe I can do it from in here. Camera rail. We add a track. And is there an option to add a camera from in here? That can have its own events too. Audio night mode, new binding. Yeah, that's not, I don't think that's gonna work. So it has to have its own independent track and it didn't go in. Now it did. All right, so here, we, I think I just discovered my reason why I wasn't able to add certain things before because I keep trying to add them to an empty area, which logically that would make sense in most uh, editing programs. When you're going to create a, or move something, you move it to like something that's not occupied because if you drop it on top of something, it'll attach it to it or it'll replace it. But this thing doesn't care. So right now, I just dropped it on top of the existing layers and it created it on its own layer. So that's something else to, I guess, to remember. Let's, uh, uh, so we, let's see here. So we got the camera. I really shouldn't have to do anything to this camera because it's attached outside of the cinematic. See, it's already working. There's really nothing that I need to do to this camera unless I'm animating the camera itself doing something. So let's run it. it. It got dropped. So it turned it into nighttime when it got to that frame. And now it turns to daytime when it gets to that other frame. Quote, unquote, daytime. It turns the background black and white. But uh, there's no going back. Once you, once you, once you trigger that night mode, you're pretty much stuck with night, as far as I know so far. What is this? All right. Let's, uh, yeah, let's put it back on begin play. That way we don't go into that video game mode. And let's find the camera. The hell are you camera there it is we're gonna take that camera we're gonna reset everything so that it's at zero so it's just holy shit that would be nice for like a like a racing sequence look at that let's look at it through the point of view of that camera uh, we got to click this little camera looking icon here and it'll switch to that camera's point of view and see how it's on like this, these rails, the dolly rails. So in the editor, we can see it, but once we hit the runtime, it, it won't do it. Uh, 
that's so cool so let's raise the height of the camera to about car level And I think I'm going to fix that rail so it doesn't go into the, the lane, so it doesn't go past through cars when it's traveling. Let me see if I can remember how to do this. I'm going to exit. Let me look it up. I'm going to consult the Oracle. Go to Google. Unreal add node to rail. So let's see. Let's see what we can discover here. Drag and drop, set, what is this? We don't want to do this through blueprints. Um, let's try this one. Move the camera to your chosen position relative to the dollar. Attach it to the rail by dragging the camera actor onto the rig rail and the world outliner. Okay, we've done that. Track length and shape. Okay, selecting and moving the spline. Okay, additional points can be added to the track spine. Select the rig, right click the spline and add a point here. Okay, so there's a context menu for it. So we're going to right click somewhere over here, add spline. It's that easy, huh? Wow. Okay. So I'm going to adjust this. It travels along the center of the street. That way it avoids any incoming cars and things like that. It doesn't, they don't pass through the camera. Hopefully. That's pretty decent. Let's adjust this a little bit more. That's good enough. Good enough for the girls we go out with. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What the fuck has just happened here? It's going up in the sky. That is definitely not what I wanted. It's roller coaster shit happening. I must have accidentally 
animated it along the <laughs> the Z depth. Yeah. I wonder if I can from this uh whatever this is called, this details panel, adjust the this the the little tangent locations. Yes, it looks like I can. Oh, that's no good. Hmm. That's a very, very strange number. Yeah, that, that's extreme. So maybe we shouldn't do that. That is one crooked. Let's try deleting it. Fortunately, you can't just drag and start pulling. You gotta click on it, enable it, and then start pulling. It's close enough. Got to make sure I don't do the roller coaster thing again. At this point, we could probably go a little longer just for shits and giggles. Right. Oh, that's a crazy little. All right, that looks like a nice little curve. Nice. Hey, so you're shooting a live action one?
They're going to tell me about it. How long is it? What's it about? How many pages? What are you shooting it on? I just sold my, my camera. I haven't used my, my, my black magic. I used to have a black magic pocket cinema. I used to use the hell out of that. But I just, I just sold it. Like, all it's doing is collecting dust, you know? Might as well sell it and put the money towards something else. Then when I'm ready to go back to doing live action stuff, uh, could probably buy something a little bit more modern at that point. How did I end up with underground rails? My OCD is like in high gear right now. Okay, let's look at this. I guess we should look at it from the point of view of the camera uh, in the main editor. Uh, camera rail, little camera thing right there. Disable that. So it doesn't get in the way. A little jerk right there. Some kind of a like a little bump or a spleen glitch. Is there two spleens? Is that what it is? I don't think I need that second one. Or maybe I did. Damn it. That should be a little smoother. Switch back to that camera. Yeah, that looks nice. A lot smoother. I like the easing in and out that happens just naturally because of the type of component it is. It's it's intended to look like a dolly or to behave like a dolly. So it take into account already all the easing in and easing out stuff. Isn't it? Oh, 
because I got the rig, the, the wrong one selected. But it's still not creating keyframes. Let's uh Not creating the damn keyframe. Let's do it manually. That's not the right keyframe. What the hell's going on here? Because I'm keyframing the wrong damn thing, aperture and stuff. Let's uh, let's select the transform. just a little bit got to make sure the right layer is selected for for you to be able to add keyframes to it and for some reason the automatic keyframes are not working so I'm having to hit enter on my keyboard in order to establish the keyframe where I want it We'll do like a side view shot, like a tracking shot. Oh, now it's working. That looks nice. Now if we could just get it to actually play. It's too much for Unreal. Simple little crane shot. It's all right. If this was iClone, this thing would have crashed like 30 times by now. That's all right. It was a very simple movement, you know. We could just redo it. But it looked nice. It looked so nice. This is not going to work. Let's restore. What else was in this tutorial? Uh, this is the way to do it. Easy piece. Of what could you do? Is remove the sky elements and create your own. I use the dynamic sky from the marketplace. It looks better, anyways. Uh, it worked for me, for, but now you can't bring the city back to daytime. They're having the same issue. This is August twenty second, August twenty twenty two. This is a year ago, and and this was the same issue.
what I did was set back the BP night mode to set daytime inside of the details panel and then readjust the direction of light. Uh, WP? WordPress? World Partitioner? Wow, so this has been going on for at least a year and they haven't found a solution. Somebody went in here and manually tweaked this back. That's kind of crazy. I'm going to save this to review it later. Okay, so it's not just an, an issue that I created by tweaking all these settings and stuff. That is something that's going on with their blueprint and it's 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 a known thing this is april uh this was reported uh august 22nd wait I have an idea though. If I would have never done it in editor, then this would not happen. That's the solution. Since I don't need it to be an editor anyway. Okay. I think this tutorial just got a little bit bigger. Uh when I when I do get this tutorial done. Uh that is the trick. Go to cinematics. Where are you? In here. Fuck. I just triggered it accidentally. But okay, that's fine. Call in editor. We're not going to do that. So we're not going to fuck with it in the editor, which is going to let the, the, the effect stay dynamically. Only when it's in runtime, that way the editor will never be affected. So whatever happens in the, in the runtime, that's independent. Once it stops doing that, it'll go back to the editor and everything will be back in place, at least for now. I don't know how that's going to happen when I want to switch nighttime to daytime later on between different scenes. But for now, this should be the solution. So, okay. So when I trigger these, that's not happening. Double click on that. How do I edit this? How do I edit the events again? Can I double click on that? Can I double click that? Oh, it's open. Never mind. So this, call in editor, okay? We're not gonna do that. All right, yeah, that's gonna be the solution watch. If we stop doing that, because it looks nice to us to be able to see and visualize it, right? If we avoid that need and don't fuck with it, then it won't get messed up. So let's restart that. What else options do we have here while that's loading up? Add spleen, camera rig after follows the properties, current position of the rail, rail, blah, 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 current position. Current position goes from zero to one. Uh, camera rig crane, that's for like uh, crane shots. Crane shots can be kind of cool too. Like a car walking off into the distance. Once the camera tracks have been set, you can set keyframes to the camera tracks, you get your own tracking shots. It'd be nice if it had like a follow actor thing so you don't have to set the keyframes, but you know, it's already good enough, you know. 
it's probably better that you don't because you want it to look a little imperfect. Yeah, that's cool. So let's, uh, I restarted the system. So when we watch this, nothing's going to happen in the editor, which is fine. We don't need it to. It's the trigger one, nighttime, now. And then trigger two, daytime, right around now. Perfect. And it doesn't change it in the editor. That's fine. Let's move this closer to here. Let's shorten this. Let's see if it happens inside of the runtime if it stays messed up. I mean, we don't care about the editor stuff. We're not rendering stuff out. We just want it to all be real-time rendering. And if we ever need to export it to video, we'll plug it to the HDMI port or external editor and we'll render it out in real time. And it'll be just fine. Theories call Tears of the City. It recounts a string of dramatic stories based on actual events that happened to people I know from murders, uh, drug dose, doses, abuses, etc. Huh. Well, that's definitely an ambitious undertaking. How many episodes do you have of that? I mean, damn. How many episodes do you have of that that you're going to be making or do you have like prepped up for? And uh, so what's your first one going to be about or your next one? Oh, you're probably driving. Oh, sorry, man. Don't 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 be texting and driving. <laughs> so it turned into night and it turned back into day yes this is perfect you know what fuck it if it doesn't work in the editor i don't care i'm not doing the traditional virtual production stuff where i needed to work in the editor and put it back to normal this is beautiful it just needs to work in the runtime so it is daytime, it is nighttime, and it is daytime again. Perfect. So we can continue working. Those lights, I don't know what to do about them. They're always on. But I don't care. Nobody will notice that. I mean, that's just the way the map is. They just left the lights on. This is great. Now, you know what would be great is if these trigger points could be keyframed, then you can simulate some, um, you could simulate, um, what do you call it? A time-lapse shot where like the sun is going up and going down and the, 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 you know, the city is becoming daytime and then it gradually turns into night uh, and you can animate those properties. That would be cool. I don't have a need for that kind of a shot, but if I had it available to me, I would probably use it. But here's the thing, that damn camera is not on the rail. The 
tracking shot is not working. I can't even trigger it. Let's see here. The level blueprint. I begin play, play, or press number one. It should just play. This is so random sometimes. See, it went from nighttime to day, which would be a really cool transition shot, actually. Oh, hell yeah, I'm gonna use that. Where it instantly goes from day to night and now it's a different day. So like you can have like a, like a shot with people like at a taco truck eating or whatever. And then all of a sudden, boom, turns into nighttime. And now there's, there's like even more people are out there. That is a shot that is definitely possible with just changing it night and day in front of your eyes. Okay, now, let's figure out this stupid rail system. Why is it not working? So we have the camera rail. We have the camera. Can we drop it in here and make it a child? No. We attach it to something, or we go in reverse. The camera. Crack. Add a pass track. Dude, I have no idea what the hell that is. What will it do? Well, whatever the fuck that is, it's working. It's just not working in the right location. That is crazy looking. That's some science fiction, dark city type shot. What? It even did the fade out? Oh, it's because I have a fade out here. How the hell does that even work? Camera component, attach. So, we get this one, can we attach this one? Attach to camera rail. Something completely different. What the hell is going on now? I screwed something up majorly at some point. Oh, is this path? Why is it way out here? Where am I? Where's my world partition? 
I'm way out here. That's why it's empty. Why is that camera out there? That is so weird. Okay. Let's bring it back to zero, zero. So at some point, Let's get rid of that. Camera rail. World partition. Move camera here. It's not doing it. I'm going to have to physically move myself there. What is going on? Right. Here's the rail. But it thinks it's somewhere else. So oh, weird. All right, we're going to bring in this camera. Okay, so in the world, it's at zero, zero, zero. So it's way off over there. When we bring it here, it's still going to be off in the world over there. But we need to make it relative to the position of the camera rig. Let's see if I can match these numbers. Okay, that's still not the same location. Way up. Let's, uh, let's edit. Not here. Let's spawn a camera. Instead of using the camera that's in the system, we're going to spawn it. Man, I am all sorts of out of place. Let's just get rid of all this shit. All right, world partition, move camera here. Let's find our street, our nightclub. Right there. going to create a new rail
We don't need this daytime trigger. I'll leave it there for now. It doesn't it doesn't affect me. So here cinematics camera rig rail. Windows 70. So this part is the super easy part. We take this node, and we just stretch the hell out of it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it to the center of this pass. Actually here. Oh, I should be able to grab another piece and put it grab one more and that's the one I'm going to take to the final destination So let's straighten this three points over here. Is it two or three? Three. Fix this one. Wait a minute. Screw this up. See if we can smoothen that out. I might not have to, I could just 
Let's see. Very sharp turn. I want to get the hang of this because, I mean, right now I feel like I can probably just keyframe that damn camera manually and I'll get faster results. But the way this thing is, is like, if you could just master putting in three fucking points. you'll have a better time. This is a, the very sharp turn right here. I don't like it. I'm not sure if there's a way to smoothen that too much. It's not too much of a smoothening out without like making the curves more extreme than they really are. All right, that's enough experimenting with that. Let's see if we can attach the camera to it now. In the house right now, hanging out with it out my window, trying to take a picture of this blue jay. But everyone, every time he see my camera, he fly away. <laughs> But as far as the series on paper, I have 24 episodes. Damn. It's pretty damn good. 24 episodes. Yeah, I need to get to work, man. You know, the biggest thing with all this filmmaking stuff is, is really the writing, man. Getting the writing down, getting the story down on paper. How you produce it is besides the point, you know. Uh, getting the right story done on paper is, is, the, is the biggest thing. And if you have 24 episodes, you already done really the hardest part. Because it doesn't matter how great something looks. If the story sucks, you can't engage your, your, your people, then it's going to fail. And you can't do that without a good story, without putting it down on paper. And that's one of the things that people struggle with the most, getting stories. You got people like JS Films, super talented motherfucker, you know? I, I would give a right, my right nut to have half the talent that he has when it comes to Unreal Engine. But he kind of sucks at writing. You know, if I had his talent... I would be using it to produce, you know, stories. But then again, I don't know. It's a, uh, it's one of those things where the writing is very important. It's probably the most important. Look at South Park. You know, it's a good, it's a, one of the best examples. You got South Park, great writing. Crappy animation on purpose, but it still engages the audience. It 
Let's see. Where, what step was I on? Oh yeah, adding the camera. I'm gonna try adding a spawned camera. Let's see if I have better better uh, results with that. So click that. The camera just magically appears on the scene. It's a spawn camera, so this camera won't exist in the actual editor. It's only gonna exist. That looks pretty. What settings are those? That looks like a 35 millimeter lens. Uh, let's see here. Um, Thirty-five, yeah, thirty-five millimeter. Aperture two point eight. That's what it is. Okay, let's get rid of that. Let's put it on the twenty-eight millimeter lens. Give it a little bit more cinematic. That is cinematic. You look at any George Lucas film. Um, you know. any of these big directors, they're going to use wide angle lenses for the most part, uh, anywhere between 26 to 30, 33, 28 is a, a good average. I like 28. It forces you to be creative. You don't need something too close. Uh, and you don't need, uh, I, I really like the 50s and the 80s mainly for close up shots and everything because they're, they're more natural, but they make everything so fucking blurry in the background, and I just hate that blurry look, you know. I like it when I'm trying to emphasize like a specific point and stuff, and it does look very nice, but uh, it's, it's 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 not for everything, you know. So I got my camera spawned. Do I have transform settings here? And can I simply, oh yeah, I think I might be able to. Can I drop it in there? It, it looks like it changed the coordinates. Okay, so let's do 120 height. And let's change these to zero. That puts me right on the rail. Now let's orient ourselves. Maybe we should go a little higher. But I'm still not parented, am I? Yes, I am. Parented right there. Oh, this is only going to work temporarily because as soon as this sequence is not here, that parenting is going to be lost. So there's not going to be a way of doing this unless you're just flat out doing this for rendering purposes immediately. This is not going to work. Not for what I'm trying to do. rails not working oh why is the rail not working because I'm a dumbass let me see here uh, dock ourselves from that on keyframe one we want the rail to be at position zero so we're gonna where's the rail where's the rail the rails not even in here man So we're gonna do the
here, we're going to keyframe this position. And on the final frame, we're going to we're going to make it be at the final position, which is at position one. Now it should be animated. Right now the camera is locked to the direction of the rail because of orientation, this thing here. Let's see, the even if it's locked, let's see if we can coerce it to shift a little bit. Look through that lens. Yeah, you can still do it. Do it at this angle. You see the couches from the nightclub just sticking out of that building. Uh, camera actor transform. So you get here, I want to keep my focus. Okay. So we get to the nightclub. Focus more on that door. Bouncers are going to be. And as we continue, we want our focus to stay on that nightclub. That should work. Just push it past that fade out. With a bunch of crackheads and hookers and stuff right here along the street. And it should avoid. Oh, crazy storm coming in. <laughs> well, it's probably far, far enough away from you uh, that. That it's not gonna that it's not gonna reach you. I better save my work because I have, you know this neighborhood has a tendency of losing its power really easily. The slightest chance of rain. Okay. Right. So we're gonna play this thing, but I have a feeling that as soon as it's done spawning, I'm gonna lose everything I just did. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's not even doing it. Yeah, that thing is gone. Oh, but check this out. It's definitely nighttime, but like, if you have headphones, uh, get a load of this. Like, we're standing outside. Like, right now we have the city sounds, right? So that's great. That's fine. But... We're standing fairly close to the nightclub, and we can hear the inside of that nightclub from out here. The closer we get to it, the louder it gets, and the direction of the sound shifts based on the direction where the music is coming from. Let me see if I can trigger the interior cinematic. No, that's not what. I'm not going to mess with that right now. But it works on the inside too. Okay, here. It's going to be really loud.
So it shifts based on the direction for the from the dance floor. And of course, by the time we get to where the actors are, it's actually that comfortable level where the music can stay like that and the actors can just talk over the over the music without being and I don't have the the trigger for that that cinematic that happens in that side there. I need to fix that. Let's see. Edit. That's pretty cool. I like that. It's not working. It's going to compete against that other one. USG. I did some work yesterday that I modified some files. So I don't think this is going to work yet. This is not what I'm working on today, so I'm not too concerned. All I know is that my target goal for today has been met, and it went fairly smoothly. And I was able to figure out my workaround too because. Well, I mean, the bug is in the level editor. So as long as you don't do that, and I I mean, for, for animation work, I really don't. I don't need it to be in there. I can deal with that without having to visualize nighttime while editing. It just has to work on the actual thing. Which is actually plain. That camera reel works perfectly fine. I have no idea what I did there that's different. Yeah, that's not working. It's not launching it, so there's there's a conflict in there. Let me uh you know what I should compare as to what the hell I did with that rail that made it work. Let's get out of here. Go to Sequences. Some something is missing here. Rail cam camera component. Did I accidentally delete something? That's the fade out, the fade in. Seems it's, it's it's reading it like it's missing and maybe that's why it's not working. But it's there. But it's showing up as if it's missing. So why that is, I don't know. Maybe I changed the name of the thing. not loaded up because I switched it the uh, the world partition it's unloaded that's what's going on here it's unloaded but it's not unloaded so okay so I'm in there okay. so now these items here show up like they're loaded oh, but it says unloading level so it, did it unload it again yeah, it doesn't show up because it's technically not loaded i'm gonna have to merge it somehow but if I go into the actual map directly,
up. Place the fade out part, but not the camera. So somehow it's lost the connection between those things. Uh, content, the sequence is the same. It shows up as not available. Why is it red? Possessable rest. This item is a possessable reference to an existing item. Camera component. It's that right there. We don't care. Worry about these missing guys. I mean, I guess I could. Why did it lose that? It, it lost its. Uh, mapping to the, the characters and the, the props and stuff. I wonder if this is going to fix it. Maybe when I did that conversion uh, it did that. I don't even know if this is going to work. It doesn't matter. This is my experimental file. But it kind of sucks that I have to do all this all over again. I don't even know why that glass has its own track also. Alright, those guys seems to be back. The camera doesn't though. There's the rail camera. Yeah, it's working. Kind of. Yeah. Huh. Well, that's no good. The rail is not working. Yeah, I've done something that screws up the rail system. Let's see. So there's the animation. There's the waitress. She's going over there. Get rid of the game mode, world settings. It doesn't have a game mode. So where the hell is my camera coming from? What the hell? This shouldn't even be working. 
it shouldn't be working because I don't have a game mode attached and this is what causes that camera my, my special camera to uh to show up and be able to like do uh you know fancy stuff like zoom in zoom out like adjust the focus and all that stuff you know so that's what happens to that put none but my camera's still there which means that maybe somehow I dropped it in here and I didn't notice. Let's see. It's not in here. Let me answer this phone call.
All right, that was a very, very long phone call. So I am all discombobulated now. I have no idea where I was. I think I'm trying to figure out how to attach the camera back into the rails and see what's going on here. But um, got sidetracked, making myself a little burger. Um, gonna come back a little later, finish the job. Um, I have no idea how long this is gonna take. So yeah. Three hour mark. I might as well call it a day for now and uh, I'll come back later if anybody's watching. Uh, let's see.